Are you looking at coming onto one of Royal Caribbean's largest cruise ships, the Allure of the Seas, for one of the shortest cruises that Royal Caribbean offers, the weekend sailing, or maybe even you're doing a four-night midweek sailing? You're going to want to make sure you're following these 10 tips to make sure you're weekending like a pro. Hey everybody, it's Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser, where I go on a weekend cruise just about every weekend, and I am recently back from the inaugural weekend sailing of Allure of the Seas, and she is a massive cruise ship, and you're only going to be there for a very short window of time. And so I'm glad that you have stopped by to follow these 10 tips on how you can maximize your time on board the Allure of the Seas and make sure you're not missing anything. Now, my first tip that I'm going to give you is, you know, prepare yourself to be going on a very large cruise ship for a small amount of time. And so what I mean by that is you're going to want to watch your mindset. So there's two different people or two different kinds of mindsets that I see going on in an Oasis class ship for a weekend sailing or a four night sailing. You're gonna have the first one who says, you know what, I'm gonna do it all. I'm gonna sign up for everything. I'm gonna get a reservation for everything. I'm gonna see and do everything there is to do on this ship in three nights. And that person is gonna be exhausted at the end of their cruise. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But you need to know what you're signing up for and set the mentality that if you're gonna do everything, you're gonna be exhausted and that's okay. The other side of the house is you're going to have people that say, you know what, kind of want a more low-key experience on the allure of the seas. So you know what, it's okay if I don't do everything. Like there's going to be so much there that I don't want to stress and try to get to everything. I'm going to try to go to a few shows that I want to go to. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But for the most part, I'm going to be good not doing it all. And if I need to come back to do a second cruise to experience the rest of it, I can. But this will be a great way just to test the waters. The second thing that you're going to want to do is explore the ship. So as soon as you get your mustard drill out of the way, you get unpacked, make sure you are walking around the Allure of the Seas. And you're, number one, just figuring out where everything is. Get the lay of the land so that you don't spend half of your cruise walking around lost asking the cruise staff if the food is this way, is the show that way. They're going to be able to help you out. But if you already know where it is, you can save some of that valuable time to make sure you're getting where you need to. You're also gonna find things along your way while you're exploring that you may not have known were on the ship. So make sure you're keeping your eyes open, you're looking around, seeing what the possibilities are and taking notes on what you wanna do during this short cruise. The third thing you're gonna wanna make sure that you're doing is you are gonna wanna make sure you are getting show reservations where they are needed. So again, very large cruise ship, lots of people, like 6,000 of you on this cruise ship with a few shows to see and everybody wants to see them in this short amount of time and there's just so many shows that can go around on a weekend. So the first show that you're going to make sure you get reservations for is the Aqua Show. The Aqua Show is not to be missed on the Allure of the Seas. It is a fantastic show. And I think I saw it twice while I was there. Also had a boardwalk balcony. So if you want to check out that video, see it here, where you can see how you can watch the Aqua Show from your stateroom. But this is the toughest one to get reservations from. What you're going to want to make sure that you're doing is marking your calendar for the first day of the month prior to your cruise ship when those reservations should open. Now that is the policy that Royal Caribbean has out there. Whether they stick to that or not, eh, that's the policy. Oftentimes we see that it is a little bit different, but that's when you're going to want to start checking to get those reservations. So if your cruise is on September 23rd, let's go with, you're going to make sure you're marking August 1st because that's when the reservations should open up. The second show you're going to make sure that you're seeing is Mama Mia. Now you don't necessarily need reservations for this show because it is held in the theater and there is plenty of seating. I do recommend it if you can get a reservation for it. I think that's always wise, but you probably aren't going to need it. I'll also say if you're trying not to do everything and you need to pick a show that you don't want to go see, Mamma Mia is also not going to be kid friendly. So if you're coming with children on board, some of the jokes and humor in here, you might not want to expose them to because it is a Broadway style show and you're going to find some adult humor in it. A third show that you're going to want to make sure that you're seeing is Blade. This is your ice skaters. So they are hosting this in Studio B and I honestly, I was going to say if you were going to cut one, this is the one that I would cut. So the group that I went with, this is one of our group co group cruises. You can check out a highlight reel of how much fun we had here. But it's one that we all kind of agreed on was kind of the bottom tier for us. And we would drop if we had to pick or choose which one we could do. 
The fourth show you're really gonna make, wanna make sure you're going for is Comedy Live. So they do have a comedy club on board Allure of the Seas, and it is gonna be the hottest ticket in town because that venue is small. It is super teeny. So you wanna make sure that you absolutely are getting reservations as soon as you can for this show, especially if it's in Comedy Live. Luckily, on my weekend sailing, I think Royal Caribbean wised up and said, wow, this is extremely popular. Let's move it into the theater. And they had a sold out house for very well renowned and respected comedians on board. If you don't have reservations for any of these shows, because you just couldn't get them for whatever reason beforehand, check when you board the ship. Oftentimes, the cruise line holds back some reservations and will open those up on boarding day. So make sure you're getting to the ship early. It is a weekend. You don't want to waste time. Get there early, check in, and see if you can grab some extra reservations. If you still aren't able to get reservations, show up, I would say, 45 minutes early to make sure that you get into the show. The comedy show, if it's in Comedy Live, you're going to want to show up at least an hour early. Let's talk about some food secrets on board the Allure of the Seas. There are a ton of dining options, and I think a lot of people don't even know what they are. My favorite alternative dining options to breakfast in the Windjammer, it's going to get crazy in there, are going to be number one, Johnny Rockets. So if you're still looking at having a sit-down meal for breakfast, Johnny Rockets will serve you breakfast sitting down for no additional fee. The second place you're going to go to is Park Cafe in Central Park. They're more of a grab and go kind of establishment, but a lot of people love it for their ease of use and what all you can get there. And sitting in Central Park for breakfast is actually really peaceful. The third place you're gonna to wanna to consider, and this is in indigenous, I would say, to Oasis class ships and I believe Quantum class ships, is Vitality Cafe. So you can go to Vitality Cafe, you can get an espresso, you can get a coffee, you can get smoothies, you can get all sorts of healthy drinks up there, fresh pressed juices that you can order. They will be an upcharge for a lot of their juices that are over there, but they're really good. If you're with the Crown and Anchor Society, you've got vouchers, you can use those there, and the drink package is gonna work as well. And by the way, the Starbucks on board here, that drink package and vouchers is not going to work. It is a standalone Starbucks, so don't try to use your drink vouchers or your drink packages there. You're going to make sure you're going over to Cafe Promenade, Park Cafe, or Vitality Cafe to be able to get that espresso fix. The fifth thing that you're going to take note of if you were going on this sailing, something that it took my group a few nights to figure out, there actually is a plug behind the bed. So to get to this plug, you will need to get down on your hands and knees. You will need to pull up the bed skirt, maybe even move the nightstand over a little bit to plug in a device. This will keep you from having to put that 10 foot cord, I'm pulling mine up, for you uh, to run across the room. It will stretch, but most of the rooms are gonna have a plug behind the bed. This is great for CPAP users that are out there or people that just like to keep their phone beside of the bed. If you have mobility issues, Please don't get down on the floor where you cannot get up or it's going to be complicated to get up. Ask your stateroom attendant to come in and just say, hey, would you mind plugging this in real quick for me? And they'd be glad to help you out. The sixth thing you're going to make sure you're doing is arriving early at Port Canaveral. So Port Canaveral, it's going to fill up. Parking there is a disaster for a weekend cruise because guess what? A lot of folks aren't flying in from California and from Canada to go on a three-night weekend sailing. They are driving to the port because they're like me. They're locals. They're super close and they can do these easy getaways because they're not a lot of money out of pocket. So the parking lot and parking garage at Port Canaveral is going to be busier than it's ever been when you have weekend sailings and four-night sailings there and it is a mess. Make sure you're showing up early and you are being patient. If you're coming in a Uber or a ride share like I do, you also don't want to get caught up in that traffic. You're able to get out of your Uber at the very entrance of the parking garage. You don't have to get into the traffic. Just walk over. You will thank me later. It's not too bad of a walk. It's only a few minutes, but it will keep you from, or it'll save you probably 30 to 45 minutes of sitting in traffic. The seventh thing you want to make sure that you do is have a passport on this cruise. Yes, it is just a quick weekend cruise. Do you need a passport? No, you don't need a passport. But there's many reasons why travel agents recommend that you get a passport. The first biggest one is just if something happens in a foreign country, you don't want to be stuck in a foreign country without a passport. That is a recipe for a disaster. But I'll say the more likely scenario here is when you are getting off at Port Canaveral, the people that have passports simply go up, we stand in front of the facial recognition, it turns green, we keep on walking past the customs officials. If you have your paper, documentations, birth certificates, what have you, please make sure you're checking with the travel agent that you've got everything you should. 
um, you're gonna have to stand in a pretty significant line to be able to talk to one of the two customs officers that are working, prove your identity, show all your documentation, and then you're gonna be able to clear customs. Save yourself probably 30 minutes of just standing in a long line and being able to go directly into the passport line and you're out of the terminal in no time. Speaking of getting out of the terminal, the eighth thing that I'll say here is do not take the shuttle from Port Canaveral Airport to the terminal or vice versa. I think that it's probably worse going from the Port Canaveral to the Orlando Airport. It is about a 45 minute drive, but it is not a good situation. You have to wait for the bus to clear up. You don't get great instructions. You don't know where to go. There's a lot of complications with taking Royal Caribbean Shuttle and they're gonna charge you $20 per person, if not more, it is expensive. So if you're a party of two or three, consider a ride share. Yes, you can hail those from Port Canaveral. That's what I did to get to Orlando. You're looking at probably about $75 for a one-way trip. So do the math on your side, see what that trade-off is, is do you wanna waste all the time trying to figure out the shuttle? Do you just wanna call it Uber and have door-to-door -door service? Me personally, I do the door-to-door -door service and for some reason had a 25% off coupon on Uber. The ninth thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're not doing is don't waste money on buying the Wi-Fi package. It is not necessary on a weekend sailing. And I say that because, you know what? I think that most of us can go without Wi-Fi for a few hours a day. I'm not saying go carte blanche and get cold sweats and all that good stuff, go through withdrawals. But if you are, if you have a good international plan, I use Google Fi, I think I made a video, I'll try to link to it here. Um, make sure that you've called the company, you know what your international plan is, and you can buy that instead. So when you are in Nassau and you're in Coco Cay, you're gonna be able to pull from the Bahamas cell phone towers. So you'll have reception while you're in port. Normally this reception is gonna last at the end of the day for Miami. You'll probably lose reception around six, seven o'clock at night. You'll pick it back up first thing at seven in the morning, and you're gonna keep that until 5.30 or six the next day. Rinse and repeat this for Sunday. You'll have reception from about 7 to 5.30, 6 p.m. in the evening. And then you're back home in Miami. So as long as you're comfortable going without internet for three hours a night, you might save yourself at least $125 per person to not buy that internet package. The 10th thing that I will talk about is I will end where I started, and that is make sure you understand the layout of the ship. There is a ton of stuff that the Laura Seas offers, and you're gonna be there for a weekend cruise, a short cruise, and you wanna make sure you're maximizing all of your time. So watch this video here on a full ship walking tour of the Allure of the Seas, and it's gonna give you even more pro tips throughout this and show you where you need to be going and what you need to be thinking and scheduling yourself to do on the Allure of the Seas for a weekend. All right, everybody, this is Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser, hoping to see you on a weekend cruise soon.